When I hear the term camp knife, I immediately think of a jack of all trades tool with design features that empower me to chop down medium to small branches and delimb them for fire prep as well as shelter building, split up kindling for my fire, well balanced enough to make feather sticks as well as basic woodworking, the ability to cut cordage easily for repairs as well as projects around camp. And it's got to be proficient at preparing meals because we all know that camping is really about finding a cool spot in the outdoors and eating really good food. And thus enters the blade that's going to get the full rundown today, the K-Bar Camp Turok. And it gets its DNA from a knife that I believe offers some of the best value to performance in the combat survival knife arena, and it's the original K-Bar Turok. This blade can still be snagged for under $100, still made right here in the USA with over a 6-inch blade out of Crovan 1095 steel. And yes, it can repel dino attacks. And the Camp Turok just extrapolates off of the original with the exact same handle, size and dimension, exact same style sheath, but now stretches its blade length out to eight inches, gets rid of the back swedge on the original and sticks with a classic drop point. Meaning that this knife is in steep competition with the SE Hungulus 2, having the exact same blade length and spine thickness. And it also sits squarely in between the size ranges of the Becker BK7 and the Becker BK9. And now having put it through a ton of camp chores, let's see where it excels. Oh, that's a good one. I haven't done that in a while with a big blade. That is sweet. But also maybe where it falls short. And that's why it's not chopping as well. So let's get after it. Now size, weight, and balance are something that definitely stands out with the design of the tool. There just aren't a lot of eight inch camp knives out there. You usually get either more compact, like six to seven inch blades, like the SE6, the original Turok or the BK7, or large choppers and machetes that are usually 9, 10, 11, 12 inches in blade length. So this eight inch is somewhat unique to the market with very few other competitors, but it's not a blade heavy tool. This only comes in at 12.8 ounces for the tool itself at 3 16ths of an inch thick. What that means is that the balance point is right there at the guard, making it a very well balanced tool. It's not too front heavy, but it's not too back heavy. And you're able to manipulate it in a lot of different tasks where a lot of blades getting into this blade length would end up fatiguing your hand and just not be very easy to control with the finer work. But that balance and light weight does impact the chopping capability. It's just not quite as good a chopper as I was hoping it would be. You can get through stuff that's about two and a half inches in diameter, you know, chop down a small tree or delimb a large branch off of another tree, and then delimb all the smaller stuff about the thickness of your thumb without much difficulty. But if you really have to blast through some stuff for a larger fire or a bigger shelter building activity, this just doesn't have the weight behind it to really bite into to the wood. And I discovered it chopped about as well as a Becker BK7 or an SE6. And the Hungless 2 will easily out chop it because it has an extra seven ounces of power crashing into that wood. And when you're out there camping, you got to be able to trust your equipment and your tools and know that they have your back. And that's why when I do an overnight in the backcountry or go for a day trek to test out gear, build a fire, cook a meal over it, I always make sure to have with me my Zolio satellite communication device. And here are three reasons why I use Zolio for my satellite communicator. One, it provides a familiar smartphone experience for me as I send my messages over cellular, satellite, and Wi-Fi. But if my cell phone dies, it can fully function on its own for days with its built-in power source. Number two is its dedicated SOS button that when engaged sends your GPS coordinates to first responders. Number three is value. This is the only Iridium satellite communicator on the market that comes in at just under $200. And that's why it goes with me when I go explore everything this world has to offer. And guys, with the holidays right around the corner, now is the perfect time to either get or gift a Zolio satellite communicator. And I'll have a link in the description box below, as well as my exclusive promo code for you, the viewers, which will waive that $40 activation fee. So the next time you get out there to enjoy nature, you and your loved ones will have the peace of mind to know that you can reach out in an emergency situation to get help and communicate and let them know you're okay. 
Now the trade-off to it not being an excellent chopper, the factory edge and edge geometry with that very high saber grinded almost as a full flat into that 3 16 inch blade allows you to get fuzz sticks done very easily and get quite a bit of them done because of the large blade, making it easier for you to do a longer cut giving you those longer curls. Good one, I haven't done that in a while with a big blade, that is sweet. But also basic camp chores and woods craft tasks like making a point on a piece of wood for a tent peg, a stake, some other activity that you may be doing and notching and other types of woodworking, not only because it has uh, no swedge, no clip to worry about, a simple drop point on the back spine, giving you ease of putting your thumb in different locations and just overall woodworking with the tool, it felt like a six inch survival knife instead of an eight inch survival knife, which was refreshing, but still giving me a lot of reach for different other tasks that I may encounter, mainly splitting up kindling for your fire to keep it going. At eight inches, you're able to span larger logs. I've really pounded through this, and I was very pleased that the 1095 held up to all the shock and impact that I had on it, and gives you quite a bit of back spine to work with, with no swedge to damage your batoning stick, and allows you to crack open that wood rather easily. Now, it's not the reigning champ of batoning, obviously quarter inch thick, 10 inch blades will be better at that, but then you're gonna, again losing a lot of the finer work capability that some of those larger tools offer. Now as stated earlier, let's get real. Camping is about going out, hanging out with friends and family, enjoying the outdoors, connecting with creation, and then enjoying yourself and making a good meal around that fire in maybe a way you normally don't do with our microwaves and all the technology that we have inside our homes. I'm happy to say this is a pretty good chef's knife. Now, obviously like an eighth of an inch thick full flat grind is gonna be better, but I was easily able to get vegetables and meat prepped for some kebabs. Now, before we look at the handle, which is a mixed bag, I do wanna hit another really big positive and it is value. I paid $118 for this and certain sites when available, you can score this for $99. So between 100 and let's say 125, 30 bucks max, 120 for sure. That is a really good deal for an eight inch blade made in America with Crovan 1095 steel, polymer sheath, full tang and all of the capability that we are seeing. It's very hard to beat what the Camp Turok offers, staying in line with its original sibling, the original Turok, that still comes in at 90 bucks. And I do appreciate it if the Turok series or some of the competitive options make sense for you today, or just gear in general. When you use those hyperlinks, it's free for you and helps me continue to make content, buy gear just like this to test out for you guys, the viewers. Okay, now to these handles. If you own the original Turok, they're exactly the same. Dimensionally, everything and all my measurements, they're exactly the same size and shape. So if you know what you're getting with the Turok and you own one, you're getting it with the Camp Turok. If you don't own either, they're polymer handle scales, very similar to the Becker series. Um, they call it something like Ultramar or something. I don't know, it's polymer. It, it's there. My Carta would be better. To my knowledge right now, K-Bar does not offer aftermarket handle scales in my Carta. That would be awesome for the Turok series to have. I think that would take it to the next level, but it's not a deal breaker. And remember, we're talking about value here. Uh, full tank construction all the way through, these screw on, and you do get a really nice guard right there, locks you into place. No thumb ramp to fight over like the Becker series, so that's really good. You got a little sharpening ricasso and just that it's all mill or milled, but it you know machined well, rounded, very contoured. Chest lever grips are very easy with this. If it was more head heavy, blade heavy, I would have definitely wanted a finger choil, um, but it seemed to be able to do work very easily without it. There wasn't a necessity to have it. Um, now, five inches overall from front to back on these handle scales, but this is really, I believe these next two points are gonna either make or break it for you, determining whether or not this tool or even the smaller one may be the right choice for you. You notice here that there's a very gradual sweep, nice contouring, so in theory, that should work pretty well. The problem is twofold. One, I have large size hands, as everyone on the planet who's ever watched the video now knows, uh, and the, this is gonna matter. 
from this knuckle where my finger attaches to right here where my pinky, that is 3.4 inches long, just for perspective. When I grip the tool, that sweep is almost at the end. If you, I would say if you're like 3.6, 3.7, definitely on your handle width, you're gonna start to come off of the handle just in a normal grip. And my buddy, Brian was with me, he has double XL hands, we didn't measure that width, but his hand was back here, and so what was happening is it was creating a hot spot. Yeah, that's all over. You see my hand is all heated up. Okay, come over here. So this is, for certain hand sizes, too short from, from where the handle scale starts to here, and you're gonna actually end up like trying to grip the handle, and then it creates a hot spot right back here, kind of in the center of your hand, whereas if it had just been kept going longer and then dropped, that would have been better for more hand sizes. I have also read video reviews where a lot of people with XL and double XL size hands were complaining that the handle was too short for them. For me, it is just there any shorter and it would not be working. What I was hoping for is like, hey, here's a lightweight, long bladed, decent camp knife for like 110, 120 bucks. Yeah. And it's decent. The handle for the size, the smaller knife is better for that handle because you're not going to be chopping with it. Phase two are these screws. You see that? That is projecting up above the handle scale by like a micron. Definitely on the front, even slightly on the back. Now the idea is cool because you only need one Allen wrench, whereas a lot of blades, even like the Hungulus and stuff, you need two, you know, to remove and tighten, you know, the handle scales. This makes it very easy. And you don't run into that problem with the BK series just because the holes are more recessed in. The problem is that these holes are not deep enough and therefore it keeps those projecting ever so slightly. And so I didn't notice it all the time, but there were definitely moments where I'd be gripping in a certain way and I would feel that screw kind of in my hand. And so ultimately, at least on my model, these are too high and I would end up having to take a little Dremel sander or something just to try and bring it down ever so slightly, just a little bit and then it'll be flush and fine. You won't even really realize it's there. But that is something that I was like, mm, these screws are too long by like one uh, groove. They're like one groove too long on my model. And it seems like my original Turok doesn't quite have that problem. They seem to be flush and not protruding slightly. So I don't know if the it's just a bad batch and like slightly too long screws um, or there's something else where they didn't drill the holes in all the way. And I don't know if that's a recurring issue or just on mine, but it's something I wanted to point out that you may have to do a little bit of elbow grease to grind down or sand down those bolts to really give you a good ergonomic feel and you don't have these projecting sharp ridges of the screw. Sorry, I'm saying screw the whole time, it's bolts. But now finally, the sheath. This sheath is a really good production sheath. I've seen some say just polymer, some say Kydex. So I'm not quite sure what it's made out of. It's a synthetic. I'm really happy with it. Not only is it really secure in there, almost no rattle, really good retention in there, excellent thumb ramp to pull off of so you can easily deploy and that'll work really well, particularly with its smaller brother if you were using it in more of a combat utility role. You don't have to do any walk up. So that's very nice. Good drainage hole, tons of lashing points if you wanted to use paracord or other types of molly or blade tech locks. And then comes with a good nylon reversible. So you can just unvelcro it, swap it over. Um, belt strap, very large, good weave, and a secondary button snap right there to keep the handle really in place. So it's, it's pretty slim, it's compact, and it's polymer, and I'm very happy with it. And it will definitely be an upgrade over the, the nylon sheaths you get like say on the BK7 or 9. And so guys, it's been an interesting ride testing out and using this blade. It, there's not a lot of competition out there. It's able to perform a lot of camp tasks very well. It has great value, it checks a lot of boxes the handle and some of the other things that we've kind of discussed and just kind of lack of the ability for it to chop does detract some from what maybe some of you want out of your camp knives. So guys, thank you so much for coming over today. Check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber, putting up content like this every single week. Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts on the Camp Turok. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.